Winnipeg fans, last episode we talked about the Jets in two years and how things might be a little bit complicated for Winnipeg, especially as a lot of contracts are expiring and the Jets don't have that many players under contract for the actual roster itself. We'll dive into who might stay and who might go and how this could be an exciting time for the Jets on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Your Locked On, the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, we just love and appreciate your support. Now, like I said at the top of the episode, like this is going to be one of those ones where we we take a bit of a time machine to the future, right? We talked about it on the previous episode that the Jets have a bit of a complicated future, I would say, in in about two years, right? Obviously, Winnipeg um, has has really kind of focused on, you know, a, a lot of players on this on this team maybe not sticking around for much longer. But let's kind of ignore that for now. Let's talk about who should actually stay and who should actually go. You know, which players are really worth making a big offer and, you know, how the Jets might navigate what's going to be a bit of a tricky situation. So two years down the road, right, we talked about Ehlers maybe walking. I guess one of the other players that you might ask yourself about is Ix Alifalo. You know, what is he worth and should the Jets bring him back? And I think for me, Alifalo is a fun player for a middle six role. Obviously, you know, at four mil right now, he's a little bit expensive, and that's part of the reason the Kings decided to let him go in the uh, Dubois trade. But I follow in like a depth role wouldn't be the worst. I will say that at this point, you know, when he expires on his current contract, he'll probably be kind of in that range of, of you know, his his late 20s, early 30s, where you start to wonder, you know, how much can you realistically you know, see from him in the in the following seasons. And I think for me, I follow, unless he really lights it up, I kind of feel like it'll be nice to have him for the next couple of seasons. But after that, it might be worth parting ways, just because the Jets have a lot of guys internally that could probably bring a similar level of impact. Um, and that's not to really slight I follow at all. In fact, I follow is really good. And I think he has been a little bit underappreciated throughout his career. But, you know, in terms of what he might ask for as a free agent and what the Jets can probably afford, I'm feeling like that's probably more likely to be a bit of a separation at the end of his contract. In a similar vein, I kind of feel like the Jets should maybe part ways with Mason Appleton at the end of his tenure, uh, whether they do it earlier with a trade or something. I just feel like Appleton, for me, Unless he sticks around for like, I don't know, a year at a mill or something, I don't know that it's really worth bringing him back for anything more than that. Uh, It's nice when you have internally developed players who can bring, you know, solid bottom six impacts, but I feel like what I wanted out of Appleton and what he's been able to provide since then, it, it just hasn't really aligned for me. Um, and it's, it's a shame because like I thought he would become like the next Andrew Cop, right? I, I was really feeling like that might be what he is able to bring. Uh, so far, it looks like Morgan Barron is kind of shaping up more in that vein rather than Appleton so far. Um, Mason, you know, since coming from the Kraken, he just hasn't really been the same player. And I don't even think it's because of injury or anything like that. It just seems like his performance, uh, unfortunately, has really taken a bit of a turn. And unless he's alongside somebody who really drives a lot of play and um, tends to be that that higher-end player, I feel like Appleton hasn't really been able to keep up as much. But otherwise, I mean, like, again, if he comes back for like a million or something, I don't think there's anything to really be upset about by that. Obviously, it's nice when you can keep guys that you've drafted and developed. But, um, you know, beyond that, Appleton, I, I feel maybe hasn't quite lived up 
to what I thought he might bring. And then in terms of other forwards, one other free agent that's maybe worth talking about is Vladislav Nemesnikov. Obviously, Nemesnikov just resigned, and uh, you know he's he's here for two years at two mil, which is a, a great value contract. Um, I think he provides plenty of punch for a very budget price. After his contract ends, though, it's probably you know best to let him uh, move on to greener pastures, just because you know he's going to be in his you know early thirties at this point. And I don't mind it as like a depth signing if he were to return on an, like a reasonably cheap deal. I don't know that he'll want to do that, but in terms of, you know, maybe Winnipeg opening some spots for their young prospects and stuff, Nemesnikov, he's going to be on that borderline where I don't know if he's really that much better than what the Jets might have internally in two years. Right now, he most definitely is because Winnipeg doesn't have a lot of center depth and they, they definitely don't have a lot of prospects who are ready to make that jump almost immediately. But in terms of a guy who can fill in for the ne next couple of years, I think he's very good. I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, when he was resigned, I thought it you know was a really good move from the Jets. I think after that, though, maybe it's time to uh, start thinking about turning the roster over and letting some of the other kids maybe get a bit of a head start. Now, of course, we haven't talked about the defense yet, and in just a little bit we'll talk about that as well as how the Jets might even afford all of this because we know that Winnipeg is kind of coming up on a bit of an internal budgeting crunch, and if that is the case, the Jets might be a little bit more frugal than you'd normally expect. But before we get into all of that, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at FanDuel. Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Pretty darn good deal if you're like me and a Ravens fan. If you're a Vikings fan, it's also probably pretty good, but, you know, we'll see how the Vikes do this year. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets every for, for every victory. And you can use those bonus bets on everything from spreads to player props to over-unders and so much more. If you're ready to get started, visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for joining us on tonight's episode as we talk about Winnipeg in two years, right? We talked about the Jets maybe having a bit of an uncertain future. Things are going to be complicated, um, but... Obviously, for the Jets, one of those complicated decisions kind of comes down to who you re-sign and bring back. And in two years, in terms of the defense, obviously, um, we're, we're going to have some major decisions to make, even as soon as next season. Uh, but in two years, right, Nate Schmidt's going to be up, Neil Pionk's going to be up, uh, and Dylan Sandberg will also be up. Now, of those three, only one of those players for me should really be coming back. Um, and that's, of course, Dylan Sandberg. Sandberg has been really good defensively since joining the Jets this past year. Uh, I, I know that we saw some brief flashes from him in previous years, but this season he really kind of, for me, stole the limelight as um, somebody who's going to very clearly anchor that second pairing, maybe even work nicely uh, in and out with Morrissey, just a, a player who I think is going to really be that that left side rock defensively that the Jets have kind of lacked because Morrissey is very much offensively focused. And given that, it's nice to have a counterbalance on your second pairing of somebody who's maybe a little bit more defensively attuned without being, you know, an absolute drag in possession and somebody who can still keep up with transition, you know, threading the puck through. Uh, to forwards and all that fun stuff. Sandberg is, is nice and versatile. He doesn't sacrifice uh, a lot of skill for that defensive upside that he brings. So all in all, really good player. Um, what do I think he'll he'll ask for in his next deal? Probably something in like the three to three and a half range, maybe more like four. I feel like three and a half is probably where I'm thinking they'll settle for like, I don't know, four or five years. I think that would be pretty good value. It's a contract that I wouldn't mind. Um, I don't know that he's going to, you know, settle for that little, but I, I kind of feel like it, it makes sense for him not really being a prolific scorer and somebody who's more defensively attuned versus like a Morrissey, right, who uh, has traditionally put up pretty big, pretty big points and, you know, clearly has is, is set himself up for a future captaincy. For Schmidt and Pionk, uh, I know I just said that they probably shouldn't come back, and I, I really do think that's kind of the case. 
Uh, Schmidt obviously is on the wrong side of 30, and whatever he had with the, the Caps and Knights, he just really hasn't been able to translate to for the Jets. Uh, it's unfortunate because, like, I really like Schmidt, and in terms of, like, a personality, he's an awesomely fun player. Unless he took, like, a really budget contract, I don't really see a reason why uh, it makes sense to bring him back even as soon as um, next year, right? He might get traded if he were to waive. I can't imagine that he would, and I feel like, it, you know, at this point, the Jets might just be better served eating his current money because, let's be real, the Jets probably aren't going to use that cap space uh, that they would gain from moving him um, all that efficiently. So maybe it just makes sense to let him stay for one year, uh, keep your prospects and picks, and just kind of see what happens with him. Pionk, uh, un unfortunately for me, you know, he hasn't really been anywhere near what he was during the bubble year. And it's something that we sort of knew would happen, um, or maybe we were afraid of, I guess. He still gives you a lot offensively, but unfortunately, the defensive side of his game is is bad enough to where he gives almost everything back plus interest. And it's a shame, because like in terms of players who I've always said are really accountable, who are really uh, hard workers, and guys who I think they 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 work the right way. Pionk for me has always been that kind of guy, but I just feel like it just doesn't translate on the ice in the way that I think he'd like it to. And it's a shame because like like I said, he's a really nice personality. I think he's a great uh, guy to have on the team, but you know he's making almost you know six mil this year and next. And I feel like for me, it's just uh, it hasn't really been the best union and i feel like you know the jets are probably going to try and extend them i just wouldn't do that i think at this point you know it might be better served using that cap space and maybe acquiring another defender but you know the, how the jets can be sometimes when they are really into their players they're really into them so it is what it is now one of the big questions i have with all of these players that we're talking about extending or not extending is how much they're going to cost if ealers were to extend right uh, you know, he's going to ask for more than six mil. And I, I don't even know what his next ask might be in two years. Uh, as a UFA, it might be closer to eight and a half. And if I'm the Jets, I, I don't know how I would process that because um, obviously you, you do kind of want to bring him back. But if you're asking, uh, if you're looking at like an eight and a half million ask, you might start to wonder if it really makes sense for both parties, especially if he's only playing 16 minutes a night. That would be a really unfortunate uh, situation where, you know, I feel like the team maybe hasn't made the best use of him over the past several years. And at eight and a half million, right, that's like first liner money. And Ehlers is good enough to play on that first line and really should be. But he all he hasn't always had like the most prolific role with this team. And so I think it's a really tough question for me. Uh, obviously, I would love to bring Ehlers back, and I would love for him to return and be kind of, you know, Winnipeg's best overall creator, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, I don't know what his mindset is. I don't know how he's feeling. And, you know, as far as players are concerned, he's one of those guys who you don't really have a strong read on in terms of how he feels about the direction and vision of the team. Velarde's another guy where I feel like his contract ask is going to be pretty expensive. Uh, provided these next two years go well and that he stays healthy, you know, you're probably looking at seven to eight as well. I would probably pay that if he gives you, you know, performances that are in the seven to eight range. Uh, I don't really see any reason why you wouldn't. Um, he's young. He's very skilled. He's already shown that he's kind of bubbling with potential. And if he continues to uh, really track upwardly like he has so far, just do it. I mean, like, the guy's awesome. I love him. I think he's a great player, and I really hope that he uh, comes back to the Jets full-time and becomes a long-term Winnipegger. I feel like he's already got all the tools to be a really successful player. I think he could be really popular amongst the fans. I mean, there's just no reason to really turn down a gift horse when it's looking you in the mouth, even if it is going to be a little bit pricey. Thankfully, a lot of the other players that the Jets have expiring aren't going to be super expensive, but, like, in terms of Ehlers and, and uh, Velarde, those two are definitely going to eat up a, a portion of your cap, so just get ready for when those extensions roll around because they probably ain't going to be cheap. Now, I do want to, you know, talk about one other thing in just a little bit, and that's kind of how, the you know, this, this uncertainty and this period of, you might say, a bit of a bloodletting for the Jets might be a really good chance to hit the reset button. We'll talk about all of that in just a little bit.
Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts in tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you for joining us on tonight's episode as we just wrap up with some thoughts real quick about how the next two years could be a chance for Winnipeg to really reevaluate what they are as a team and kind of hit the reset button because in four years, the only player who's going to be under contract is Josh Morrissey. And in three years, they've only got six guys in total uh, cap allocation. So Obviously, as you can tell, Winnipeg's roster is about to get annihilated, but in a good way. I think this is a chance for the Jets to kind of turn over the core and start over. Uh, you know, as it is, this team had a couple of really good runs, uh, 17, 18, of course, being the one that we all remember as the magical run. But after that, the core didn't really manage to accomplish much else. A couple of playoff appearances, some early exits, some freak accidents. Uh, just not enough to really say that this group um, really accomplished what it set out to do because it was it was so close the one year and then it just didn't really get close after that. So for me, you know, this is a really good chance for the Jets to kind of start over. Um, but, you know, with that in, in mind and with that being said, the only way that they're really going to be able to start over if, is if they kind of have a couple of really lean years. And I don't think that the Jets themselves – are comfortable with that. I don't feel that they, you know, are willing to let this team be bad for the amount of seasons that it would take to get a couple of top end lotto picks that put the Jets back on the path towards being a powerhouse in like five years. I just don't see the Jets doing that, but I think that's really what they need, especially with so many contracts ex expiring. And most of the guys that are expiring, right, they're not like of the of the top end most elite. Aside from Velarde and Ehlers, you're looking at more of the kind of middle six players and, and depth guys, maybe players who, you know, have have served a, a nice role for the Jets so far, but aren't likely to be, you know, your number one first line center. This kind of gives the Jets a chance to clear out a lot of those deals, maybe promote some guys internally, open up spots for guys like McGordy, Lambert, etc. Um, but you know, other than that, the Jets really need an injection of talent into the prospect pool, which they've been getting recently. But I'm talking about like a franchise, you know, pick or two, right? Two to three of these that can turn Winnipeg's entire future around. And the only way that you can do that is is kind of tanking. I hate to say it, but I feel like that would be uh, the best option to go with once, you know, the next two years kind of wrap up. Because after that, you suddenly have a roster that's going to be pretty vacant, and I imagine that the Jets will probably bring back some of these players, not a lot of them. Maybe they'll make some free agent acquisitions and hope that their internal promotions give them something decent. But, uh, you know, for the Jets, I think it's it's a good chance to start over, to, to rebuild this team from the ground up. And if they really play their cards right, I mean, there's going to be some really talented players that are going to come through over the next few years. And this is a chance to where you can really give Lambert, McGrory, Perfetti, um, Barlow, the, the the top end supporting talent that can take this team from being really decent to maybe something special. Um, and it, it's not like this team has been horrible over the last few years, but obviously they've really underperformed. And so it's it, it'd be nice if we have like the next Mark Shifley, the next Nikolai Ehlers, guys like that who have really carried the torch for this team, but now kind of need to have um, somebody else step up to the plate. Ehler still has a good left, a good deal left in his tank, I think. Uh, Kyle Connor probably will too. I don't know what they're going to do with Connor, to be honest, just because he's also expiring, but in three years rather than two. But uh, obviously, you know, after that, you, you, you just realize that there's not a lot of committed talent on the team signed a big money deal. So this is the chance to really hit the reset button, get some top end prospects, and start your foundation for your next core because the current group group of prospects I think have some intriguing potential but in terms of a slam dunk bona fide superstar talent the Jets are still waiting for that and I think that is where um you know the, the lotto picks really would come in handy I don't want to admit it because it's always painful and we know what rebuilding will mean but hey you know the Jets might just have to bull, you know bite the bullet and do it let me know if you think the Jets should be preparing for a rebuild in two years or if you think they should even kick start it off earlier as their roster and core starts to wind down. But for tonight's episode, that is all the time that we have. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day every day. We will see you back here later this week for even more off-season coverage. 
As always, thanks for listening. Have a great night and go Jets go.